Dear Mrs. Newkirk, as I'm sure was your intent, I have been made aware of your will. You fail to say, however, what you would do with your anus. I might suggest that you have it stretched and used as the threshold for your front door at Peter. That would provide visitors and clients an accurate portrayal of what they might find inside. Dear Ignorid, with all of the innocent children being exploited, aborted and abused, with all of the people starving in this world, why don't you pull your head out of your ass and fight for a real cause rather than if a cat gets caught in a fan belt? Dear Ingrid, ha ha, you dick-eating carpet munchers, go fuck yourself. You assholes really are demented. All of you belong in a cage with all of your four-legged buddies. You are truly fucking tasteless. I wish you all meeting up with a Jeffrey Dahmer so he can rid the world of scumbags like you. Understand, Mr. Newkirk. I mean, I think your intentions are good, but I don't know if you're persuading anybody. You see, you're just teeing people off. You're making people think that you guys are all a bunch of nuts. They do all sorts of things uh, to say, look at me, look at my agenda, without recognizing how many people they offend. The PETA organization is a very strange, disturbed group of people. If they had their way, they would put medical progress at a standstill. Ingrid, you've been quoted as saying that a rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy. In feelings, in the things that are important, they feel fear, they feel loneliness, they struggle to live. You're asserting there's no difference between a human being and a farm animal. And I'm sorry, you lost me and you lost millions of Americans at that no. point. In the wild, they die slowly in pain as much as any turkey in a turkey farm. They're like concentration camps for animals. How far out to lunch are you people? These people, of course, place animals above human beings. It's a very dangerous movement. They're involved in terrorism. If they only wanted to wear their plastic shoes, eat their bean sprouts, I wouldn't have a problem with them. But they want to make use of the government to impose these crackpot ideas on the rest of us. I think it's a very dangerous movement. Our goal is total animal liberation and the day when everyone believes that animals are not ours to eat, not ours to wear, not ours to experiment, and not ours for entertainment or any other exploitive purpose. I would like to be kind, but it makes for a very difficult life if you follow <laughs> everything they say. Not a world I'd like to live in. life, I felt absolutely driven to try to convince people to consider animals, no matter what they're doing, whether they're buying something to eat or wear or they're, they've got a dog in their house. They need to think of what that animal is going through, to put that animal in the equation. It matters to me. I don't know why. I didn't choose it. It might be just purely that I can imagine myself going through exactly what they're going through and I, I want to stop it. There has been an undeclared war on animals since the beginning of time because they're vulnerable, because you can pick on them, because they can't arm themselves, because they don't know that you're coming. You know, they, they, they can't cry surrender. They haven't attacked us. They haven't done anything. And yet, we continue to attack them. We continue to round them up, imprison them, strip them of everything, and slaughter them. For what? The reason we started PETA was to fight against what we believe is the enslavement of animals. We really, I really believe that animals have been enslaved by humans and are treated just like slaves. Alex Pacheco and I were sort of like Jack Spratt and his wife. I knew about animal experimentation because I had inspected laboratories, and I knew about cruelty to animals cases. 
he knew about um, the Japanese going out and, and killing whales. He knew about fox hunts, those sorts of things. And he was a vegan. I wasn't. And he teased me about that. We pooled our knowledge and formed Peter in my little two-room apartment. And uh, we used to wrap our uh, feet in uh, blankets to keep warm while we were typing things in winter, make our homemade placards go out into the street. And we had our very first demonstration at a Washington, D.C. live chicken slaughterhouse. People could not believe anyone was defending chickens. The first investigation we did was in Silver Spring. Alex went undercover into the Institute for Behavioral Research. This is uh, one of the Silver Spring monkeys, a photograph I took when I was working inside the laboratory. And this just shows them every four months they were put in this immobilizing device where they're totally immobilized. And then it was my job to inflict pain on them. Earlier this month, police removed monkeys from the Institute of Behavioral Studies where they were being used in experiments on the central nervous system. Police testified that the animals were living in filth and had untreated wounds. The documenting photographs were taken by members of an animal welfare group named PETA. Every single researcher in the world within a week knew about PETA. It really shook up the entire biomedical industry. It got onto the front pages, it got into Congress, it went all the way to the Supreme Court twice. It really saturated the country like no other cruelty case has ever done. These animal rights groups have been around since the 19th century, but PETA came in as a group of shock troops and said, okay, hey, we, we need a new level of intensity. Once we did the laboratory investigation, it just caught on like wildfire. A group of demonstrators has taken up the cause of animal welfare in an NIH office, risking arrest to make their point. It ended peacefully but emotionally, as about 65 members of a group called People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals left the building they'd been occupying and declared victory. They were young, energetic people who um, were edgy and wanted their own brand of, of animal activism. Animal rights activists took their protest inside the LA Convention Center. They picketed General Motors, the only car company they say that still uses animals in its crash tests. General Motors announced today it would no longer use animals in crash tests. People for the ethical treatment of animals is claiming a victory against Maybelline. The world's largest cosmetics company, L'Oreal, has agreed to stop testing its cosmetics on animals. Tonight, McDonald's bows to pressure from the Norfolk-based animal rights group PETA. I just know on an anecdotal level, I think just the word PETA, you know? I mean, I think if you said it 20 years ago, people thought of bread. And now they think of something else. You know, when you ask yourself, is PETA doing any good? One way to gauge, to rely on this thing that I always believed in, is that you can gauge a man by his enemies. If you were to go and ask every butcher, every guy who's killing animals all day long, mutilating animals all day long, if you were to ask every one of those, which animal group do you hate the most? Of all the animal groups in the world, every single butcher would say, I hate PETA. 